I thought I'd just start by, I have a little artist statement and I thought maybe I'd, it's short. I thought I'd start by reading that. I think it says what I'm trying to do with these, these photographs as well as anything. And um, they're basically a group of photographs that have emerged over the past several years. And they're, um, they're essentially meditations on our mutable relationships with place and with the limits of place. And the, the title on the borderline is kind of a reference to, I mean, literally to the horizon line, which I think most of the images contain in either explicitly or implicitly. Um, and the horizon line is, it's something that it defines space. We know where we are in space partially because of the, the line of the horizon. Um, but it also is something that is, um, it pulls us, it pulls us into or beyond where we are. And, but at the same time, it, 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 it sets a boundary. So it's something that's both, there's a push and a pull um, with it. And, and uh, so there's kind of a mysterious quality about being in, the, in relationship with a horizon, with a boundary, with, with a limit like that. And, and I think landscape photography, for me at least, is really about that sort of a, a, an exploration. Um, and I think um, the whole question of place is, is, is it place is about where we belong, what we understand, what we don't understand. Um, and I think um, a lot of these images are done from places that I don't live. Um, I live in New Mexico. Many of the, of the images are from Maine. And I have a strong connection to Maine. My wife and I lived there when we were right out of college. My grandparents are from Maine. Um, we've gone back to visit over the over the course of 40 years, essentially, since we used to live there. Um, and it's a very different place from New Mexico. <laughs> but but it's, it's a place that, that I have a lot of um, affection for. So the images come from that. There's also images from places like, there's one from Alaska that I we just were there briefly, you know, and so it's not a place that I know. And um, so part of what I do in my photography is, is it's, it's a way of interacting with wherever I am and with trying to find some, some sort of relationship with what that, that is, even if it's kind of unfamiliar. And um, I mean, one, one of my thoughts about these images, um, and, and, and let me just say that the, the, the series kind of evolved as opposed to being something I was doing intentionally. So it, it's kind of a collection of, of images that I took over the course of several years. Although the printing was done probably within the, the past nine months. Um, so, um, Um, <laughs> I lost my, my train of thought. So, um, so Jessica, why don't you start showing some of the, the slides? Um, okay. Um, so this one, oh, I, th I think I was, I was talking about, about, um, being from a different place and being in a, in a strange place and, and responding to it. Now this, this is, a, is an image of the Rio Grande River. So it's right, it, it's, it's 
part of my environment. It's like where where we live, more or less. And but I think you'll see that there's a lot of resonance between this image and um, some of the others. Go to the next one. I don't know if that would if that. Yeah. Okay. It's a good contrast. So, so the first one was the Rio Grande in New Mexico. This one's uh, at the mouth of the Kennebec River in Maine. Um, and this is where Megan and I lived 40 years ago. Not, not right here, but, but within 20 miles of this place. And so it, it's a place that we really know well. Um, and there's a quality of, of the water, of the light on the water, of kind of just the, the, the motion of it that that is quite compelling and that is, is, is part of what I like to photograph. And so um, it's kind of fun for me to have the river shot from arid desert New Mexico and then this kind of beach ocean kind of confluence of elements shot. And so it's so the same thing happens in different environments. Um, why don't you go to the next slide? Okay, again, this is still Maine, and um, and this you know this image really was a gift. <laughs> I mean, it's you're just there, and and you're in the middle of this incredible reflection. And, uh, so. So it, it's kind of a, a, what, what I'm trying to, to reflect on here is, is the, the different elements that we kind of move between. Okay, next slide. Um, okay, this is the Alaska shot. And again, the, the quality of the light on the water is just something that's uh, mesmerizing and you can do, you know, the same sort of shot and, and the light's a little different. It's, it's really quite, um, uh, you can just keep going with it forever. So next one. Um, yeah, this one, this was taken in a canoe. It was, it's taken with an iPhone, um, which I'm, I'm kind of enjoying. There, there, there's half a dozen, maybe not quite that many, but, but three or four images in the show that were done with an iPhone. And um, for the way I print, it works. And it lets you, do, I mean, I wouldn't really have wanted a camera with me in, in a kayak. I'm not that equipped with, with waterproof stuff. And so the phone is somewhat expendable and, and it works. And this, this is just, this is, it's just a little island that we were approaching and we kayaked around. And, but in the, in the, in the photograph, it's, it's, it's a line, it's, it's the horizon. It's like you're in the middle of the water, you're in the middle of the sky and anything is possible in a sense. Okay, next slide. Um, this is the fog rising. Um, um, Again, I could say the same sorts of things. Um, next slide. This one, this is another iPhone shot and it was done, my daughter lives in Austin and it was taken in a little park that's right by their house. And it, the, it was, I, again, it, it was a gift. I mean, it was just a moment that happened. I was in the right place and captured this thing, and even with the, the lens flare and all that. And, um, so I, I, I think it has a nice mood to it. Okay, next slide. Um, this, is, this is in Ireland. Um, it's at the, it, it's, it's actually the westernmost point of Europe. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a remarkable place to be. And it was raining on us. And, and we finally decided we could put on our rain pants and get out in the rain. And then, then the rain just kind of lifted a little bit. And, um,
And I think, you know, you get the sense of space going, receding forever and the possibilities of going out there, but then also the barriers. It's like, it's like, no, you can't get there. You can't get to it. And so, um, okay, next slide. Um, I'll just let this one speak for itself. It's, it's, it's a, this is in Oregon, it's on a beach. And I mean, these, these boulders just sit there and they, they are in, interact with the water. And, and again, you have the water and the sky and the horizon line and another rock in the distance. Okay, next slide. Um, this is another New Mexico shot. And um, I'll just let it speak for itself. I mean, I, I think this, this is maybe the least horizon oriented uh, photo of the, of the, of the show, but, but I think it's the, horizon, the idea of the horizon is still there. And you get the same idea of this uplift, of this cloud that's kind of just doing something that's a little bit unknown. So, next slide. Uh, this is another Rio Grande shot. And I'll talk in a minute about the, my technique. And this one, this one, I, I probably put it in the show because it's as playful as much as anything. So it's kind of, it's more about color than really about a profound statement or anything, but it's, it's fun. So, um, okay, next, next slide. Um, The Ojitos is a, it's a little wilderness area that's um, north of Albuquerque a bit. And it's, it's, it's a kind of an amazing place. There's not really trails through it, at least not developed trails, but you can go there and wander. And it's pretty remarkable. Um, I don't know, this one I think works pretty well for me. There's, I think I would like to, to have more success doing kind of this sort of New Mexico shot, but. It's, that seems to be a little elusive for me, but this one I think works. And it does give, I like it because it, it's, it's a landscape that I grew up in, that I understand um, probably better than all the water, but um, yeah, so next slide. Um, this is, kind of the most painterly of all of the images that I've done. I kind of, it, it happened um, as a print. Um, and I'd probably like to be able to control this sort of thing a little bit more, but it, um, so I'm, I'm waiting, it may come back. <laughs> anyway, so next slide. Um, again, this is, this, is, this is on the Kennebec River in Maine, which is a tidal river. Um, it runs from the, the, the ocean up to Bath, which, which where we live, and we were right out of college. And it's a, it's a gorgeous place, and, it's, and the river has, has a deep history too, so it, it's kind of both environment and culture. Okay, next slide. Um, this is Bard Island, it's on, on Deer Isle. My grandmother grew up in, in um, Stonington, so, so, which is on Deer Isle. So this is kind of in, in the um, uh, environment that she grew up in. And uh, it, it, it's, it's just the rocky, rocky shore, the ocean in the distance. And it's an island, island that, that you can only get to. I mean, it's, it's small. You can walk around it in, in less than an hour. Um, you can get to it just by walking across a sandbar, which at high tide is covered up. So um, that's why it's rising tide. But, uh, okay, next slide. And this is another one from Ireland. Um, I enjoy working with power lines in my images at times. They kind of, they bring in a different sort of element. I call this ley lines. 
it's a little bit of a play on word, I guess. Um, next slide. And this is the runner. And again, it's a, a figure in this place, in this in space, and going who knows where. But uh, and I, is that it? I think that's. The, is there one more, or is that all? I think that's it, Lincoln. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, if people have questions, I'm I'm happy to to try to answer them. L let me just say something real quick about about my process. Um, you know, I, I think of myself primarily as a photographer um, since. When I started, I mean, I started at Newgrounds and then Remark uh, to do photopolymer intaglio or photogravure um, many years ago. And, and it was, I wanted a way to kind of bring the photography more into a hands on sort of process that was a little bit more. That, that produced an, an object that would that had a lot of integrity, um, and I was starting to feel like um, the the digital digital printing in particular. I mean, it it's it gives you amazing control, and you can do anything with it. But there's for me there's there's a certain lifeless quality to the, to the thing itself. Um, so I, I, I'm kind of stuck on art having been a thing, I guess. <laughs> Not totally, but um, that somehow is important to me for my own work. So that's that's what brought me into um, doing the 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 intaglio, the photo polymer intaglio process, which is a way of going from a photograph to a plate, and then you make a print from the plate. Um, and I've been doing black and white photography since I was in high school. And um, I'm quite uh, identified with that, with that. And, but I found myself on, on a certain level being a little, uh, getting, to, getting a little bored or frustrated, bored and frustrated with the, the, black, the, the black and white photopolymer printing that I was doing. Because I felt, particularly being around all these other printmakers with all this kind of crazy stuff happening in, in the print world, um, it was like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of pulling the print off the plate and that's it, I'm one and done, so to speak. And um, so, so I, I kind of stalled for a while and then I, I just decided I wanted to try to just mess with color because there's all these wonderful colors and I don't know anything about color. So um, it, it took me a while to kind of, you know, just get some courage to put some color on a plate and see what happened. And um, it took me several months before I was getting anything that, that, that had any sort of character to it. And, um, so what I'm doing now is I, I make the plate the way I always have, um, but then I kind of look at it and I kind of come up with a palette that, that, that it interests me for the image. So, so the color in these images doesn't really have anything to do with the original scene. I mean. I, I shoot in color, but then I basically throw all the color away in, in the computer in, in order to make the plate. Um, so I'm back to this kind of uh, du dual tone um, process. And um, I, I don't want to get into too much detail about how I do it, but, but the, the color is added in various ways, but by hand onto the plate, um, and then I, I print in layers. So I'll do I'll do a color layer, um, and it might be it might be just one color, it might be two or three colors. Sometimes I do it, I put it on by hand locally. Sometimes I use a roller and make do like a rainbow roll. 
I'm still there's there's a real skill to doing that that I'm just barely getting getting to understand and um, uh, and then I normally kind of reprint I'll, I'll print it again either with with maybe I'll I'll change the the color locally a little bit and then then I'll do a, a key a key drop which is the black and white and that. It's it's kind of in, it's interesting to see because because the because the first couple of drops are very kind of pastelly and there's not a lot of definition necessarily, um, and then the the key kind of will often really bring the the, the values of the of the print way down, um, but it, it gives it a lot of character and, and when it works it pulls it together so. Um, I mean, I think my process is very much in process, and I feel like every time I I, I approach a plate, I kind of um, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do it exactly. So I I somewhat invent my technique each time, but but it it, it builds. So um, okay, so that that's that's what I have to say. And, um, thank you for thank you for listening. I hope I didn't wander off too far, but. Thank you. Any questions? Jessica had a comment. Sure, and then Gail has a question too. Um, I just wanted to say that, well, if you could tell people this, I mean, they can sort of see behind you the size, but the size of them. And then before you answer that, uh, if anyone's around in anywhere near Albuquerque, please come see these in the gallery because they're, they look great on the screen, but they look so much better in real life, as you all know, I'm sure. But they're just absolutely intricate, intric, I can't speak to it, it's been a long day, uh, and uh, super detailed, in, I don't, I'm not gonna try again, and, uh, and incredibly um, subtle and all together hanging in the gallery, it's just a wonderful space. So I just would really encourage anyone who can to come in, you know, we're an art gallery and no one comes in, so it's the safest place you could be. Um, <laughs> not, not no one, but <laughs> it's really safe. So come on in if you're in Albuquerque. Um, and also look at the show with more time on the website, um, just because they're so, yeah, meditative, I think someone wrote in the comments. So thank you, intricate, there we go. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Meeting, uh, Google meetings all morning. I, I have a question. So. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. great. Thank you. Lincoln, I, I thought your images were exquisite. They, for me, they were like a meditation on the gifts that nature gives us and that we need to stop and take the time to look at them. And um, uh, I just thought that with the changes in our environment at this point in time that they have a really strong meaning also. Um, uh, because I study photographer, photography, I too was very interested in your process. And uh, I, I have to say that um, I liked your iPhone shots as much as I did. I guess you're using 35 millimeter with your other yeah. shots. Well, I'm, I'm, it's a digital SLR. A digital, right, a digital yeah. camera. Yeah. But um, so what are you seeing uh, like the differences in the quality? Because when I was looking here on Zoom, I didn't see that any of your iPhone photographs suffered at all as far as art objects once you went through yeah. your printing process. I was just wondering uh, as, a, as a, a photographer, and it seems like you started very early that um, that you would really know like the tradition very well. And I'm just wondering how you're feeling about that as you're shooting. Because because they were great well, too. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, I mean the iPhone it's it's really pretty amazing what they what they've done with with iPhone images over the last you know half dozen years really. Um, and when you look at the image on the computer and you're kind of work, working with it in terms of 
trying to adjust values, adjust colors. The, the iPhone, it, it's, a, it's a JPEG, it's a compressed image. So it, it doesn't give you the range of possibilities that the, uh, the, the, the larger format has. Um, the digital, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I, I'm. I'm just shooting. I'm shooting digitally. I, I don't. I don't work with film anymore. But. Um, and so. It really can do an awful lot, but when you get there's there's some detail issues that that you, you can't control, and I do a, I do a lot of manipulation of my images, which start the quality of the of the image starts to degrade over as you do more and more of that and so the, the i you it you lose more with the iphone than you would with a a, a camera image um, but yeah i mean all this all this camera stuff is it's it can be very technical and it's it's really kind of arbitrary it's, it winds up being what you really are trying to do and what to, how you like to work and I, you know, I'm probably in tension with the iPhone because I, I prefer working with a camera because it gives you more control. I can, you know, I can set an f-stop, I can set a shutter speed, I, I can kind of vary the, the exposure as I want. Um, but the iPhone it's, is just there. So. But some of the iPhone photographs look so painterly. I mean, they were just, yeah. they, were, they were really, as an art object, I, I thought they, probably even look better in real life, but um, I thought they were outstanding too. I was uh, really impressed. Yeah, no, it, it's, it, it's a, just a different, it's like a different brush really, essentially. Are you working in additions? Do you work in additions or are you? Well, uh, well with these. Um, are they one of a kind? Well, I, I, I've additioned them maybe two or three at the most. Um, because it, there, it's really hard to control what happens. So, so every print is definitely different from every other one. Um, and I have, if I have a couple that are close enough to each other, that I feel like, yeah, they're, they're kind of additional. Then I, then I give it two or three, but it's, I'm, I'm loose with that. It's not, um, that, that's, that's as far as I go with that. Thank I have a quick so question. Much. Sure. Uh, Lincoln, they're, they are just stunning images. And I was wondering, so many of them have such a surreal quality. And I, I don't know if that's an intentional or, or not. They're, they're, just, um, they're just stunning. I mean, and, and it's, it's, it's just incredible to me how they are, um, particularly the ones, um, I think it was a Japanese one with the sort of layered, um, uh, little islands and rocks, and then also yeah. the one in New Mexico with the tree, uh, sort of a tree in the front, in the foreground, and I, I don't know, is that, is, does that ever cross your mind as you're shooting or you're developing these? What, the, that it's a, a surreal quality? Or, uh -huh. um, I, I don't know, I mean, the, the, the shooting process is, you know, I'm responding to a lot of different things, and and so so the the final image that I have here is the result of a of a process, and um, yeah, I mean, I think the best the best kind of experiences there's a certain uh, wholeness to it where when I take the picture, the print kind of resonates with something that was going on then. But there's a lot of just just happenstance too in photography. But there's a, for for me, and, and I like I, I like that. I'm not I'm not a. I mean, there are photographers who are really really control everything that happens, um, and I've never really been <laughs> able to work that way. Um, and so I, I like the, the the serendipity of something. And if I know the one that you're talking about, it's, it's I call it dreaming the beach, and it's, it's but that, that, um, you know, it, it was, it was foggy and the mist is coming up, so there's definitely an ethereal quality to me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, 
so that there's a little bit of a dreamlike experience in it at times. Um, and uh, yeah. Other times, you know, things are happening fast and, and you're you know, trying to catch light that changes or, or the water's moving. And, and so, so it, there's a lot of kind of, a lot of iterations of a scene. I have a question. Uh huh. Um, there's a. They're beautiful. I like them all. And then thank you. The coloration that you use is very soft and delicate. And, but at the same token, there's this really interesting graininess to them all. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is that because you manipulate the photographs down so far that they start breaking apart, or um, some of it? That's that's one component. I also will add grain into the the file before I make the transparency, um, in order to kind of give it some of that that quality. And it, it's something. It, it it's a hard thing to control because because that's something that looks really kind of cool and on on the computer screen when you print it. It's like it, it, it things just disintegrate basically. So, so, so you have to be kind of careful that you don't lose too much resolution, too much detail. But yeah, yeah, I'm definitely, I, I'm, I'm, wanting, I'm wanting things to have kind of a, a graphic feel to be more. Did you feel very print? Pardon, Pardon me? It's pretty much like a print from a press. Yeah, yeah well that's, that's, my, that's my objective. I mean, I'm, I'm, there was one in particular of clouds that just the lines and the clouds reminded me of prints from the 20s or 30s you know it just the quality of it all uh -huh. really okay. gorgeous yeah, yeah. yeah. gorgeous work. great thank you yeah. all right <clears throat> excuse me anybody else otherwise i'll say thanks to lincoln and put Didi in the spotlight Right. Well, thank you, everybody.